Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. Welcome back to Going In Raw. It's our podcast. We brought it back. It's we we were doing it weekly with just you and I, then plus Dan, and then plus Total Biscuit for a week, and then Dan again, and, and then, then da- nothing. Dan again, and then nothing. And so here we are again. That's your recap for Going In Raw. Uh, but a lot of people are asking about it. Um, yeah. I think uh, a couple a couple show notes. <clears throat> Number one, uh, Going In Raw is on the iTunes. Mm-hmm. So you can check it out if you just want the audio version because obviously if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see it's basically an audio version anyways because we have like a little card yeah. up in place of our faces. Uh, and, but yeah, you can check it out on iTunes. Um, and there was one other thing I was... Oh, we should announce... We should announce our book of the match for the next Dan episode, which is going to air post... What's the next battleground? Battleground. Did battleground. we? Did, is it officially decided that's going to be? Starcade I think whatever? it should. Okay. Be the more because I want to watch. It's I like. I swear. I'm. I'm kind of worried that we're simply going to drive Dan away. But these are the history lessons that that are informing him as a wrestling fan. Uh, somewhat new wrestling fan of the past three, two, three years. Yeah. Well, I know we were motivated to find something with Dusty in it. Yes. Um, and then uh, I was watching uh, Bash at the Beach 96. <laughs> and Dusty does commentary on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, from be- beginning to end, a much more enjoyable show than Starcade <laughs> 85. So I'll just throw that out there as an idea. Oh, God. I, I'm so torn right now because Starcade 85, it's such a snuff film looking pay per view. It looks like everybody's there to watch uh, cockfighting. The way the arena's lit. <laughs> See, okay, let's stop right here. That conversation can't be said. That can't be said about Bash at the Beach '96. No, there's a whole there's a whole other wealth of problems with Bash at the Beach '96. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. <laughs> oh God. Oh, it's so it's so I'm so torn. I I'm really leaning towards Starcade '85. It's so bad. And the, okay, how far did you get? Oh, I don't know. I uh. I don't know. I, I forget to be honest. I, I didn't get to Dusty Flair. I didn't get to that. All the matches kind of blend together because they're all bloody. The, I see, and that's another huge reason. Cause I want to get Dan's take on how much blood is let in these matches. I want I want to get his take on something that so far we haven't really discussed. Because mm-hmm. I mean, even six years or five years later, there was a pr- it was a pretty big difference when we talked about Wild Thing. Yeah. Um, versus Starcade 85, which like you said, looks like it looks like human cockfighting. Yeah. Um, I think, I think there's blood in every match. I think there is too. Like it was just something they did. So that's something I kind of want to get Dan's take on. And then maybe down the line we can, uh, we can visit uh bash of the beach 96, but I'm really kind of anxious to see okay. Okay. because also we can talk about Abdullah the butcher. <laughs> Okay. All right. So announced, confirmed, book of the match for the next, uh, next, uh, uh, for the Dan, next Dan episode, next special episode, a next special event, uh, going in raw with Dan nerd cubed is going to be Starcade 1985. Check it out on the network. It's a lot of blood. God, it's so much blood. Feel free to skip through some stuff. You know, we're not going to blame you if you do that. We spoiler alert. I've skipped through some stuff. I'm, you did? I watched the whole thing. I'm known to do that from time to time. Uh, so anyways, those are our announcements. Uh, time to get into... <laughs> Rock hat. There you go. There it is. That's what I like to hear. Brock Lesnar, the Beast, returned two weeks ago. Uh, yeah. We would have reviewed his return last week, but we'll review it now. Yeah, well, we'll review that plus the uh, the events that unfolded last week. Yeah, um, and then uh, we can speculate on where it's going to go f- from there. So basically, Brock v Rollins at Battleground. Yeah, officially. Yeah, uh, I guess he's off his. He apologized when he came back. He apologized to Cole and JBL for destroying them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was kind of a funny segment. Let me ask you something. When he gave Michael Cole that uh, noogie. That's what it's called, right? The noogie. Yeah. On the on the head. Yeah. Do you think that was improv, or do you think that was that that was planned? I would like to think it was improv. <laughs> I think Michael Cole was about to shit his pants. 
Because <laughs> I don't think he saw that coming. It was pretty funny, though, because he did his... I haven't heard Michael Cole's old, like, whiny nerd getting beat up since the DX days. Yeah. And he did. He was like, hey! Yeah! It was great. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Brock's back. He's scary. Scared the crap out of Seth Rollins. Rollins is pissed off at the authority. Yeah, that was... I mean, back. it was cool, though, their, their showdown. Mm-hmm. But I thought it was kind of cheap how they brought Brock back. Like, yeah. Okay. Suspension's over. We negotiated. He's back, and it would have been. I don't know. Maybe it, it, it is too predictable, but I, I would think more effective if he shows up at the beginning of that raw and just starts beating the shit out of everybody. Yeah. And says it. Le- and sorry, uh, Heyman says he will stop if he gets this. <laughs> yeah. Of course, this being a title match. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. eventually, you know, uh, Triple H goes, "Okay, okay." Like you know, maybe. Uh, sorry. Uh, Lesnar could have Triple H that move, whatever it's called, that he broke his arm with. Yeah. Um, after suplexing him and f fiving him a couple times, and stuff would mm-hmm. be like, okay, okay, fine, you get your match. Yeah. And then they could still use the same justification to Rollins, you know, that, okay, we need to test you. Right. You can still do that. Yeah. But just the way Lesnar was reintroduced, I don't know. It did, there was no bang to it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got you. I, I agree with that totally. Um, I like Rollins then sucking up to the authority members that he had, uh, that he had burned bridges with. Yeah. Uh, I thought that, <laughs> that was pretty funny. I just love Rollins all over. Oh yeah. Um, so that was good. Uh, let's fast forward to battleground though. Do you see, uh, Brock, uh, reclaiming the title? Well, they're setting it up. So the odds are stacked against them. I mean, that yeah. was, and it was fairly effective the way they had the whole authority come out. I forgot, I forgot to mention too, uh, Brock destroyed Jamie Noble's ribs. Apparently. Yeah. He During legit- this confrontation at the yeah. end of last week's row. Yeah. Yeah. Broke, broke three ribs. Broke three ribs. Yeesh. Um, but it was pretty well done in, in terms of making us think as the audience that Rollins has a fighting chance come battleground yeah. based on how the authority whooped the shit out of Lesnar at the end of Raw. Me personally, I'm not sure I see Brock having the belt again because at that point, what do you really do? I know. Um, the only reason to put the belt on Brock again is to have Reigns beat him. Yeah. And even that, it makes me wonder if they... If they if, I don't know. I, I, seeing the kind of it's so weird. It's so weird that they want Reigns to be the top guy so bad that they're literally using somebody who's way hotter, Dean Ambrose, to pal up next to him to to get him over. I know. It's like why don't you just? I mean, they 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 seem to be pushing Dean Ambrose pretty well, mm-hmm. um, and maybe they just they understand that he, he doesn't really need the belt. I think it'd be awesome if he had the belt. Oh yeah. Um, but because I think even when he stole the belt, you had some interesting things going on. It was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. So if he had it legit, I think he'd, he'd make it fun also. Oh, yeah. Um, I like, I do like, I'll put it, this, I'll, I'll say this, though. I like that we don't know. Uh, I have absolutely no idea where this is all headed to. I don't know mm-hmm. where it's going. I mean, yeah, I'm kind of the same opinion that ultimately they want Reigns to have the belt. But I also know that, I know that they've probably learned their lesson in terms of pushing it down people's throats. Yeah. And if it's not going to work, it's not going to work. And I don't think they're going to do that until they know it's going to work. You know, what could happen is mm. is have Seamus get the belt and have him feud with Reigns. Mm-hmm. No one likes Seamus. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, if it's a Seamus-Reigns match, everybody's going to cheer for Reigns. <laughs> That's a good point. No one likes Seamus. That's a good point. I, yeah, just put it on somebody who people legitimately don't like. It's, or put on the Miz. Yeah. Oh, well, ugh, that just gave so. me. Ugh, ugh, <laughs> oh, God. I think it's terrible. Um, what else is happening these days in the WWE? Ziggler, um, Ziggler uh, you have in your show note here, Ziggler resigns. 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 He's, resigns. he's done. He signs a new oh, contract. Oh, resigns. Yeah. Isn't that weird that the same word means two of the opposite thing? Yeah, it is kind of strange, huh? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, there was some speculation. His contract was coming up to an end. Uh, it was about to expire and there was some speculation that, you know what? He hasn't really been, he's, he's, he's like the ultimate utility player in Mm -hmm. the WWE. Like you can use him to get people over. He's popular on his own. He's the best worker in the business. Um, but he hasn't, he's only flirted with the main event scene, uh, due to his concussions, uh, it seemed like they really kind of don't trust him up there holding the big title, mm-hmm. but they trust him enough to know that he's, you know, he's, he's a big time role player. Yeah. But there was some speculation that he might walk because, you know, he hasn't had time in the main event that much. 
Um, but he's he, also have uh, he also has a burgeoning uh, stand up comedy career. Is that true? Yeah. Really? I didn't know. Yeah. I know he dated yeah. Amy Schumer for a spell. No, he does stand up. He he uh, he posts uh, stuff on Twitter all the time about <laughs> yeah, his funny. his stand up gigs. That's kind of rad. Yeah. I wonder if he, have you seen have you watched any video of it? No. Oh, okay. I wonder if he's funny. Probably is. He seems like a very smart, charismatic guy. Mm-hmm. It's weird. I hope that he doesn't go like with all his concussions. I hope he doesn't start like losing his brains in like five years. Well, I think he's only had two concussions. Yeah, I thought so. I mean, it, uh, uh, you know, there was there was such a to do made about the last one he had against uh, Del Rio, but I don't think he's his he concussions have... are just always horribly timed. Yeah, that's his thing. Like it's like he doesn't get a concussion now when he's not really doing much. He but gets put a, a belt on him. Put and then... a belt on him and immediately. It's sort of like Barrett. Yeah, I know exactly. As soon as he reached, where, where is Barrett lately? Anyways, uh, losing to r Truth. Ooh, see, I love that though because I love r Truth. Yeah, I do too. He's great. Uh, so yeah, the, he said uh, Ziggler said uh, I'm planning on I'd love to finish my career with the WWE, um, and it makes you wonder uh, with new contract, new push, perhaps, maybe. Hopefully. I Maybe. mean, he has Lana with them, so they haven't really done anything with that yet. They haven't done shit with that, and they need to stop doing that because they just have zero chemistry. Did you read that weird thing about Vince McMahon wanting them to be a real couple? No. There was a couple reports. Wait, doesn't he know that Lana and Rusev are a real couple? They were saying that Vince wanted that to break them up, that he prefers like the shit that goes on screen. To to have some to to have some basis in reality, have okay. No idea. Like it's funny. Everything I read about Vince these days just makes it sound like he's even more out of touch than like this whole thing about the divas. You know, like Nikki Bella having this belt an obscene amount of time. Mm-hmm. I guess it just. I guess like there's some speculation that they want her to be the longest reigning champion because currently it's AJ Lee. Yeah. I'm sorry, the longest ever, you know, reigning champion or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um but that would take her all the way through September. Wow. If that was the case. So that'd be a big fat bummer. Uh, I guess he was pissed off also. And these this is all spec this is all like shit that you read on the internet. So who fucking knows if it's true? It's probably not. Might be. Um there were some reports I read, I think this morning or yesterday, he was pissed off at uh the a lot of the spots in the Ambrose Rollins match at uh Money in the Bank. Uh, specifically, I guess, like how Ambrose got powerbombed like three times. Mm-hmm. And then Triple H was like, yeah, if they're fine with it, then I'm okay with them doing it. They should do it to entertain the crowd if they're okay with it. You know, but Vince is like, no, we have, you know, very strict safety policies in terms of our matches. So we shouldn't let them do shit. So, yeah, I don't know. That's Vince. Uh, what were we talking about just now? Uh, Dolph. Dolph, yeah. Uh, I don't know. You think he's going to get a push now he got a new contract? Uh, he might get a, a intercontinental title push. No. Oh, God, he doesn't need that belt again. No, he's I know. He's so languishing in between intercontinental and main event. Well, when Rusev comes back, Rusev. there'll be the feud between Dolph That should and be Rusev. a good one. See, I like feuds yeah. like that, that there's something tangible. You know, there's yeah. something there. And they've done an interesting job of, of bringing some humanity to Rusev. Oh, I love that. You're right. I do. He's just hobbling around on his crutches being sad yeah. um yeah but going back to ziggler and lana they need to like get her like that suit of hers works perfect for rusev she needs to glam it up with Dolph. she can be hanging out with Dolph. otherwise she just looks awkward and weird yeah she looks really out of place she should uh dr- you know like dolph's been really pushing the 80s hair metal yeah yeah vibe. Totally, yeah she should do that too put a bunch of hairspray in her hair and make I it all no that'd be super like she would then Due to recent events with Paige posting tortured dog pictures, that would then elevate Lana, perhaps. Although Carmella's up there pretty high right now, there was a great get. I tried to, I tried to, uh, to to swipe a GIF off of Twitter because somebody posted a, a GIF of uh, of Enzo, Big Cass, and Carmella, and it was a particularly funny one, like of him doing the the Bobby Schmurda dance. Mm-hmm. And then she has like a buy Felicia shirt on. I don't know. I love those guys. They're great. Uh, anyways, I wanted to swipe that GIF and I couldn't figure it out on my phone. I was like, kept on pressing it down and there was nothing was happening. Yeah, you can't save uh, GIFs off Twitter on your phone. Yeah, it's annoying. Can you do it off your computer? I don't know. I haven't tried. Okay, I'll try that. I, I thought I've done it at some point. Uh, Where did you find that Nightcrawler one? 
Uh, I just did a search for uh, Lewis Bloom GIFs, <laughs> and there was a Tumblr that had a bunch of them. <laughs> I'll have to go in there. I watched that movie again. Man, I like that movie. Yeah, no, I, I kind of want to watch it again. It grows too. on me more, and the more I watch it, the more it grows on me. Uh, <laughs> all right, listen, we also got, I have not seen, I'll be honest, I've only sort of seen bits and pieces of Raw the past two weeks. Yeah, me too. I, I've not seen any of the Bray vs. Rain stuff. I haven't either. We can skip that. <laughs> There was, I think there was one, I did see, like, so apparently a part of this feud is, like, Bray, like, uh, takes pictures of Rain, like, like obtains, like, pictures, like, promotional pictures or something of Rain's, yeah. and he'll write on them and post them up where places, like, Rain's would see them. Yeah. It, it reminds me of something me and Lacey do, like, there's this picture of Devin, of uh, my stepkid, as uh, as an old man, because he did this school project thing where he had to dress up, he had to cosplay as a histor- historical figure as George Eastman. And there's a picture of him that I keep on putting in places where I know she'll eventually be. And then she'll do the same thing. So essentially they're just, they're just re, uh, uh, they're doing your gimmick. Yeah. They're doing my gimmick. They're reconstituting my gimmick. Uh, and he like, right on him, like rude things like, you know, lost your chance and shit like that. And I'm like, this is not the direction Bray Wyatt needs to be going. Like that's just, it's just passive aggressive. It's like, He's always kind of been passive aggressive, but this takes it to another level. Yeah, he has been passive aggressive. This is perfect with his character. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, I guess this week we'll all have to pay attention to this feud. Yeah, I'm just hoping maybe at a battleground they'll have a really nice package. Although I'm not sure how you, how much drama you can make in a video package where it's just him leaving rude pictures of Reigns. Like this is I don't know, and then like interfering in his matches sometimes. You know what always kind of bugs me is when uh, Bray shows up in a match and they cut the lights, but really they just chop the video out of the, they just cut video because it goes to pure black, not just the lights go down. Yeah. That's annoying to me. Show me what's happening in the actual arena. Do they actually bring the lights down? I'm sure they do, but also uh, they go to pure black on video because if they didn't, you'd be able to see what was going on in the arena. <laughs> That's an, I don't know. Just like, I want to see. I'm sure once the, once the lights go out, everybody, you know, all the people take their phones out yeah, and stuff to try to see what's going on or something. I don't know. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know what happens. It gets annoying. Although, um, you know, you know, depending on, on how the cameras are, are set for the exposure of, of Raw, mm-hmm. you could just turn all the lights out in the stadium and it would be pure black. That's, that's what I would think. Because that's, video yeah. has far less latitude than film does. Yeah, exactly. So that's it's possible. what I would think. But, but also you'd think, you know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to turn everything off. Everything off. There'd be some stray lights here and there. Like, I'm yeah. sure they're not all connected to one thing. I don't know. Uh, let's see here. What is this? Beast in the East special. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're having yeah. A, a, a show from Japan on the 4th of July that they're airing on the network, which could be interesting. Did you see uh, Kevin Owens cut the promo on uh, Hideo Hitami? Yeah. I love Hideo Hitami. Yeah. I like, I'm totally fine with him not being able to speak much English. But it was fucking hilarious because he stumbled over his words. Owen stumbled over his yeah, words, yeah. laughed, and then said, I sound like Hideo with Tommy trying to speak English. And he legit laughed. <laughs> oh. He was uh, he was really awesome. I was w- catching up on some NXT over the weekend. Yeah. And uh, he came out for Samoa Joe's first match. Yeah. And did commentary and was Awesome. I still have to watch that. He cracks it me up because hilarious. he see he doesn't he seems like he fits right in. Like he's not nervous at all. Yeah, and he's just even when he stumbles over his words, like he knows how to play it off, and he's just he's natural as hell in front of the crowd. Yeah, there's this one moment. Well, it's at the end of the match, and and Joe's like kind of staring him down, and he just he just says, "All right, I'm done with this." <laughs> <laughs> and gets up and walks away from the uh, the commentator's booth. It's so fucking funny because it seems so genuine. Like, all right, I'm done with this. <laughs> That's great. And uh, it was it was hilarious though because I'm not going to imitate his accent, although I was imitating it in the car. Uh, but when Hideo says, he says, "You're a great champion, but you're a terrible human being." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said something that. Owens couldn't even understand, and it cuts to Owen, and he says, what? <laughs> oh, man, that's that'd make for a great feud if it was simply just a language barrier. Like, they had <laughs> no idea what each other one was saying. Um, I, I like that. I like Owens. Like, I want Owens and Cena just to be done already. 
I, I I like it, but like, Cena's just bugging the shit out of me. He's so annoying. Like, yeah, he is. Uh, he's uh, nobody cares what language you're speaking. They care that you're a, a jackass. Like, it's, uh, it's just so annoying. Uh, so, anyways, they're headed to uh, Japan. Uh, Lesnar's gonna fight. Is this correct? Mm-hmm. Lesnar's gonna fight Kofi Kingston. Yep. Really? Yep. Is Kofi really over in Japan? Uh, I don't know. Why is he fighting Kofi Kingston? I don't know. He's going to get destroyed. I'm sure Brock will win. <laughs> uh, Jericho versus Neville. That should be fun. That should be a yeah, good Yeah, that could match. be interesting. Uh, and uh, is this this is going to be... Yeah, and, oh, and this is... Okay, cool. Fourth of July. What time, is, what time on the Fourth of July? I don't know. I'll have to check. All right. I think they're replaying it throughout the day, though. Oh, cool. And then uh, Owens versus Balor for the NXT uh, championship. Owens will win that, right? He needs that. I don't know. I mean, Balor, as Prince Devitt, made his name in Japan and mm. New Japan Pro Wrestling, so it's possible they... I don't know. I'm, I'm really curious how they're going to get the NXT belt off Owens. Yeah. When he you know transitions full-time to, to the main roster, whether it's uh, Balor that gets the belt from him or if, or if it's Samoa Joe. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, they were really pushing Balor on the uh, the latest. The last yeah, no, I saw that. They had that, 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 uh, that. package. Yeah, kind of overviewing his history, which was actually was really well done. Yeah, it was. It was really well done. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I think I don't know. They could they could take it off him for for maybe that show and then bring it back here and and have him get it back. It's kind of he kind of needs the belt for I know. for his thing with Cena right now. I think. Yeah, he does. Um, so there's that. I like, I like when he's all sneaky, when he fought Dolph on the last week of the week before on, on raw, because he had an open challenge. He said, I never said it was for the belt. Yeah. <laughs> what a jerk. <laughs> uh, so anyways, that's what's been going on in the world, the current world of wrestling. Uh, oh, you don't want to talk about TNA and Jeff Jarrett coming back? No, I don't either. I Move don't on. at all. Ugh, worse. That is a sinking ship of emotion. Um, yeah, so it's time for uh, a very quick gorilla position yeah. before we get to the favorite, our favorite segment of the show, Kayfabe Corner. Yes. Uh, and you have you have all the names for Kayfabe Corner, right? Yeah, it's done. I spent way too much time researching it. Oh, fuck. This might be... I'm not... In terms of the difficulty, it might not be terribly high. Okay. But in terms of... Because you, you established a theme yeah. uh, list Absolutely. last time with, with the cane theme sure. list. Sure, sure. So I did a lot of research into my own theme to list. Okay. Good. So you'll have to, uh, we'll get to it. Here, right. Let's do gorilla I'm position first and we'll to get it. to it. All right. I'm looking forward to cracking the code. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I've been playing, I unlocked, I was playing some W, some WW 2K14. I got, I've got a secret thing coming up, uh, that I'm looking forward to. And so I've been playing some WW 2K14. I unlocked everything. And I noticed that when I unlocked everything, a lot of old school belts pop up. Mm-hmm. Uh, like for example, the AWA heavyweight championship belt pops up in 2k 14, which I thought was pretty neat. And so it got me thinking, what's the best looking title belt of all time? The best looking title belt of all time. I've always thought that the, 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 the finest piece of championship hardware yeah. was the WWF title. Back in like the '80s and early '90s, up until when Stone Cold made the Smoking Skull belt. Yeah, are you like referring the to the winged, the winged eagle? Yes. Yeah, yes. that's a good-looking one. I've kind of always been partial to the WCW Big Gold belt. Yeah, that's a that's a fine one too. It's huge. Yeah, it is absolutely huge. It was funny when Rey Mysterio won that; he looked ridiculous. Even when was... uh, Daniel Bryan had it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's just swimming in it. Mm-hmm. Big belts. Um, I always love the old, old school belts. Like the one there's like, I think it was like an NWA United States Championship. Which that was, was shaped like the U.S., right? <laughs> it was yeah. shaped like the U.S. And they're always so tiny. And they just look ridiculous like in comparison or in contrast with belts today. I know. The belts today are, are huge. Um, among the worst looking belts, we have the current. I, these might be the worst looking belts of all time. The tag team belts? The tag team belts. Also, John Cena's uh, spinner. Oh, yeah. WWF title. That was awful. Um, when The Miz turned the WWE logo upside down and locked that into play, locked the spinner belt in place upside down. That was kind of funny. <laughs> You're like, I'm fine with that. Yeah, that, that I'm fine with. That's that's at least kind of clever. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of other unique belts in the world. I've always liked... 
I always like the didn't the European belt have like the the countries of Europe the flags of Europe on it or something? That sounds correct. Yeah, I don't know something like that. I always liked when I liked the Intercontinental belt back in the late eighties and nineties, like when the Warrior had it and Rick Rude, because they would always change the like the Warrior would change the color of the strap mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. They went through a lot of different variations, mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I thought that was very colorful in keeping with his character. Mm-hmm. Um, Let's see. I, I sort of <clears throat> once I think when Stone Cold did the Rattlesnake Belt, that was the only time when I was like, "Oh, that kind of makes sense to him." But then, like The Rock, I guess had his own. Did The Rock ever have his own belt? They they have a Rock specific belt, like a Brahma Bull belt in the game. I don't really? remember seeing that. Though. Yeah, I don't remember that either. Okay, maybe that was just maybe that's just the game. Um, you know, Edge had his own version of the belt. One scene, I think. You know, he had his own belt, his the spinner thing, and then Edge did his own thing. Uh, that guy got kind of ridiculous. Yeah, I wasn't into like just very specific. The the world title, world heavyweight championship belt mm. should be timeless. Yeah, exactly. It really should be. How, how, how what do you think about the current the current belt? Oh, where they have the customized side plates. Well, no, just the belt design in general. It's the, the whatever giant WWE logo. It's it's not that impressive. I do like. I do actually like the the side plates that are that they mm-hmm. change out based on who the the champion is. I, I'm, my yeah, only, I'm, yeah, I'm totally fine. With I that. only wish that when Brock was champion, instead of having his logo, they yeah. had uh, the Jimmy John's logo. <laughs> that would been neat. That would have been neat. Uh, otherwise, all those old belts. Let me see. What's let me? I'm going to take a look. First NWA uh, title belt. I just want to see. What oh, it's really small. Here. It's probably tiny. Yeah. Yeah. Those belts are always super tiny. Let me see here. Uh, image. Uh, I don't know. These are like the current ones. Oh God, what is this? This looks like some sort of Canadian piece of crap. <laughs> this is terrible. What is this one, man? Title belts look weird. God, this is an ugly. World champion. This is WCW TV champion. It just looks like they screenshotted like their uh their opening uh, graphic for World Championship Wrestling and put that <laughs> on on a belt. God, some of these are atrocious. Anyways, I think I can agree. I think we can both agree. Yeah, the the, the Flying Eagle the w, and the WCW World Heavyweights. I think those are, to me, those are the pinnacle belts. Yeah, probably yeah they are time. in a class of their own, definitely. I'm just not huge on having the giant WWE logo no. <clears throat> on, like, taking up the entire space of the fucking belt. Yeah, that, that, it's not terribly creative. Yeah. Yeah, and then the, uh, TNA's X Division is just a giant red X through it. That looks gaudy as hell. Do you remember uh, uh, Jeff Hardy's custom belt he had in it TNA? It was ugly, wasn't it? Yeah. That was horrible. I think I do. Hold on. I'm going to look it up. Jeff Hardy WWE belt. Because I think no, I no, do no, it was, it, was T- it was a TNA belt. Oh, TNA belt. Yeah, because he never had a custom. He never had the custom uh, WWE one. Nope. What is this pile of crap? Oh, my God. that's uh, That looks like a Divas belt. Mm-hmm. That's horrible. What a weirdo! That guy's a weird dude. He still does crazy moves, though. I know that's insane. He's like it wasn't too long ago he landed on his head. Yeah, I remember seeing that, and that was supposed to be a planned spot. I know they were saying that was actually planned. That was ridiculous. What an idiot! Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, is it time for K Fape Corner? Yeah, it's time for K Fape Corner. Let's do it. All right, I'm Our gonna, favorite part of the show. Let me get out. I got a pencil. I'm gonna yeah, keep track of your score. Keep track of my score. You guys play along. Let us know in the comments and on Twitter at Stephen Larson or at yeah. MFSTV or at Joy of Bearding. Uh, let All us right. know what your scores are. Yeah. So Honor uh, system, too. Honor yeah, system. Nobody have, really cares. We have 12 names plus a bonus question. Yes. And uh, if you can't uh, ascertain the theme after the 12 names, I will let you know. I am not confident today. I'm having a good day. I had oatmeal. I had my coffee. I woke up relatively early. I got some stuff done. But I'm not confident about Kayfabe Corner today. Okay. I don't know why. It's just a gut feeling I have. Well, like like I like I mentioned to you earlier, the in terms of, of, of getting a high score, I don't think that's going to be a problem. I'm more interested to see if you can uh, see what the theme that's is. That's the theme. All right. Yeah. That's what I'm more interested <laughs> in. All right. Number one. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Sterling Golden. I'm going to say real. Yeah. Yes. And also, uh, well, I'll, we'll go through these names. Oh, we'll go through these names first and then we'll. Sterling 
there's some more information I'll, I'll, I'll need to, to okay. give you. Okay, all right. Uh, number two. Yeah. Starship Falcon. That's real. Fake. Oh, shit. Okay, it was Starship. Okay, all right. Uh, next. Okay, go ahead. Bobby Hogan. Bobby Hogan. That's real. Fake. Fuck. Next, ready? Uh, yeah. Chet Lemon. There's been two fake. Chet Lemon. That's gotta be... That's real. Yeah. Okay. That was a guy. I didn't know that. That was that was a guy. It sounded fake. I wanted to say fake, but by I virtue know. of the last two were fake. Nobody does right, three uh, fake in a row. Number five. <laughs> okay. The Handsome Stranger. That's fake. Real. God damn. That sounds like a sounds like a, a sex move. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like some variation on hand job. All right. Uh, number six. Okay. Adam Smasher. Adam Smasher. Oh, yeah. how do you spell Adam? Like the name Adam? I'll say real. Fake. Fuck. God, I'm only at two. Yeah. Uh, number seven. Okay. Fabulous Flanagan. That's real. Fake. What? Oh, my God. Uh, number eight, right? Yeah. yeah. The Cannonball Kid. Has to be real. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number nine. Yeah. Butch Hart. Butch Hart. In my, I think I've actually heard that name before. I'm going to say real. Fake. Fuck. Uh, the Mariner. The Mariner. The Mariner. Yeah. Like the Seattle team? Yeah. The Mariner. Oh. It has to be real. Yeah. Uh, number Was 11. Was he aquatic themed? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would assume so. Name's the Mariner. Uh, number 11, Mega Mask. Mega Mask. Mega Mask. Mega Mask. I'm being thrown off because I've got a Google image search of Jeff Hardy's stupid belt. In front of me. <laughs> Mega Mask. Like, I want to say, these all sound fake. <laughs> But I think I've exhausted the fakes. Oh, fake. Real. God damn, really? Yeah. All right. Let's uh, see. Last one. Okay. Percy Paris. That's real. Fake. Fuck. Got, fuck All right. It was my, my bonus. Oh, uh, no. Let's wait to the bonus. You're not going to get the bonus until you uh, know what the theme is. Okay. I think this has something to do with. This has something to do with AWA. No. That it has something to do with the NWO. Yes. These are all members of the NWO. Yeah. For example, Sterling Golden Uh huh. used to be a name used by Hulk Hogan. <laughs> I did not know that. Starship Falcon was fake, but Starship Coyote was You're, real. And that's the only reason I knew, because that was Scott Hall. Scott Hall. Yeah. Uh, okay. Chet Lemon was Nash. That Chet was Lemon character. was Nash. Yeah, the Never handsome stranger that. was Buff Bagwell. Okay. Uh, Cannonball Kid was uh, uh, X Pac. X Pac. That's right. Okay. Uh, the Mariner uh-huh. was Brutus Beefcake. <laughs> that's like, was that before or after his boating accident? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> uh, Mega Mask was Rick Bogner, who was a member of NWO Japan. Okay. And also the fake Razor Ramon. Oh, okay. I did. Wow, look at that. So, knowing this is all Ooh. NWO theme. Yeah. Other than Dennis Rodman, there were three celebrity members of the NWO. Just name one of them. Other than Dennis Rodman, there were three. Okay, wow. Three celebrity members of the NWO. Hold on a second. And you better not be going on Wikipedia. I'm not. No, I'm not touching anything right now. Come on. This is an honor system. I, <laughs> I, I know. I, I'm going to get one. There was three others. Yeah. All right, give me a second. I have to get at least one of these. How many did you get? Four? Did I got? I got four. Yeah, I got four. Okay. It's pathetic. Told you I wasn't going to do good. Uh, three. Three members. Okay. Uh,. Is 
Is Rick Rude considered a celebrity? No, he's a wrestler. <laughs> uh, okay, let's think here. All right, tell you what, give me one of them, and then I'll see if I that that might jog something, and I might be able to get the other two or one of the all, two. all you need is one. I know, but I want to know one of them, and that might jog some shit in my memory. Okay, and I might get okay. one of the others. Okay, there was uh, at Clash of the Champions thirty five. There were uh, two celebrities inducted into the NWO. They were both hosts of Dinner in a Movie. Uh, one was uh, Paul Gilmartin. Paul Gilmartin? Yeah. <laughs> he was only he and the other guy were only a member for one night. Oh God! And then but there was, was one other celebrity member that has nothing to do with Dinner in a Movie. <laughs> There's one other celebrity. Shit. You know what's, you know what's funny? Huh. Uh, I was trying to <laughs> work Scott Norton yeah. into this, but he's only ever wrestled in <laughs> the name Scott Norton. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's great. All right. I give up. I don't know. Uh, the other uh, host of Dinner and Movie was Claude Mann. I had no idea. Okay. And then the other celebrity member was uh, NASCAR driver Kyle Petty. <laughs> Who apparently used to race in an NWO car? <laughs> That's fantastic. That's great. Did, was he was he ever on a wrestling program in an NWO uh, shirt? I don't know about that. That is fantastic. That was that. I I, I salute you. What a fantastic! <laughs> this you have stepped the game up. I'm ready. I, I'm gonna as soon as we get off the the line here. I'm going to start researching. Yeah. Uh, also, next time you can, I guess you're coming over tomorrow for the podcast. Yeah, uh, Hilton has has given us uh, a new a new uh, a new backdrop piece. Oh, really? And it's fan- <laughs> it's fantastic. Do I get any hints? Uh, yeah, it's related to it's related to one of the one of the the alternate names you gave me today. Oh, you already told me you had a Razor Ramon poster. It is, but it, this is it's like full size. It's huge <laughs> and it's awesome. It's fantastic, and he's going to be behind us in some capacity on uh, the next going in or the next uh, podcast for the win. Okay, all right. Anyways, that's our episode of Going In Raw today. Uh, yeah, we'll be back next week. Yeah. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye. <laughs>